Hello, and today we're going to be talking about edgy protocols are as good as gold. And today's topic is Iron Chef. Um, Iron Chef is probably one of my favorite edgy protocols. It's what got me hooked. Um, one, because I love games. And two, it's so engaging for students. Um, and it's really fun to plan out, too. I really enjoy creating the Iron Chef templates. So with these sessions, um, you will get a wakelet at the very end. I'm going to throw all of these tabs onto a wakelet. You can see there's a lot today. And so everything will just be on a wakelet. And I'm just going to share that in the chat once we are finished. Um, and on this wakelet, it has other sessions as well. So you can go in and you can see like the one that we did um, before, Sketch and Tell. There's an intro to Edgy Protocols. And then there's also Thin Slides. And this just keeps on adding as we do them. Um, so the collection is just going to keep getting bigger. And so today I'll throw all those resources onto this Iron Chef one and you can go back and you're able to, I can kind of show you the one for sketch and tell, and then you can go back, you can rewatch it. And then you can grab any of these templates that you might want to use. All right, let's go ahead and look at Iron Chef. Um, so me and Megan Fernie, we did a session together at the Edu Protocols World Ride. And of course we chose Iron Chef because it's my favorite. Um, so during this session, this is kind of what Iron Chef is. It's one source and it's a jigsaw type of activity. So students are maybe looking at an article and one student takes paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and so on. And then it's a jigsaw activity because they're kind of taking that information and then they're teaching each other. Or maybe it's some type of unit that you're working on like fractions and one kid takes adding, another kid subtracting, multiplying and dividing, and then they're comparing like what's going on. They're finding facts and images about the topic. And then each student typically um, gets one slide each. Now I have seen where groups might work together and maybe you would rather do that rather than like that jigsaw type of activity and that's totally okay. Um, also students typically get 10 minutes. I've also seen teachers adapt the 10 minute rule, but typically there is only 10 minutes involved. Um, but again, I've seen teachers kind of adapt depending on their students and what they kind of need. And then every single student is going to have like a secret ingredient and this secret ingredient could be an image, it could be a quote, it could be a meme, it could be a GIF. It just kind of makes the um, competition a little bit fun. It's just like when you're watching Iron Chef Live, their cooks are cooking and then all of a sudden it's like, you have to add pineapple into this recipe and it might not go well with the ingredients that you have. Um, so again, it's just a lot of fun for your students. Uh, each group then will present. Usually it's no more than two minutes. Um, so they're just going to real quick go through their slides and share with the class what they kind of learn. So that's when your jigsaw project like really comes into light because the kids are sharing, I did this part of the project and this is how it relates to that part. And so here are just some templates. Again, I'm gonna share all of these um, tabs on a wakelet so that you'll have access to all of them. And on here, it's just like what, how, so just kind of what I quickly explained to you. And then again, that special ingredient. Um, just going over again, what is Iron Chef if you need a recap in writing? And then this is a way to organize all of your groups, which we'll talk about at the end because um, it can get a little bit confusing. So one of the first things I like to do is we'll show the students up in this table what group they're in. So I might make like another row and then just start typing names in here. 
And so group one, all the students' names are here and I might bold the group leader so that the kids know, okay, that student is the group leader because their name is bolded or I could even change the color um, and maybe make it like that blue color. So then the kids know which student is going to be the leader for their group. Then I usually play a timer. So then I'll play some music and a timer and I say, when the song is over, I am going to start that 10 minute timer. So you have a little bit of time to get with your group, make a copy of the presentation, share the slides with your team, and then give every single group a task that they're going to work on. So deciding who's going to work on which slide, who's going to do what, um, and just kind of splitting it up that way. If we finish early, we're gonna help each other. Um, so really giving clear directions for the students. Your students that might have a disability or are EL might benefit from having some of the material ahead of time. And so you might, if it's an article, you could give it to them the day before and maybe they read it for homework or they read it during their um, tutoring time or some open time where they could listen to it just to give them a little bit more processing time. That might help some of those students. Then it just goes over how to share the slide. So um, group leaders will make that copy. They're going to rename their copy. So they're going to go to file. They're going to go to make a copy and then they're going to rename it the group number. Um, it's really nice to have these protocols on how to name it, because if you're going back or you're trying to explain like, OK, this was what group it's easier for you as a teacher. And then they're going to share it. And then I always have the kids share it with myself as well. And then I want to make sure that the students that are in the group are able to go to the shared with me folder and that's where they'll find it. Um, they can also go to their email and they get that email notification. And then we start the timer. So for this one example, we did 12 minutes. Um, again, it doesn't have to be that 10 minutes. Just know that most of them are probably around 10 to 15. And I keep the timer up as the students are working. And so then the students will get these different prompts. Okay, this is ones that we did with adults. So these are for adult learners. And on um, one of these tabs, there's some student examples, which I will show so it kind of makes a little bit more sense and you can make a connection with how this might work. So the first activity is the recipe for Iron Chef. Students would come up with how Iron Chef looks. So it's timed, students do like a jigsaw activity, it's collaborative. And um, students have to present at the end. So those could be my like four ingredients. Now there's a special ingredient. OK, so there's this icon over here and the kids have to use the noun project. So this noun project is icons. And so because I said share, like they have to present and share at the end, I might pick one of these icons, drag it on over to the presentation and that would be one of the secret ingredients, okay? Now it does say icon, so I would probably match all four up with a different icon, okay? The second one is a lesson idea is a special ingredient. So students would have to share a success story of how they might use this when using Iron Chef in their classroom. How could you see it being a real success? Um, so an example that we've seen a success with Iron Chef is Students have been able to collaborate. We've seen students that have a disability want to participate. And I've seen kids like in their IEP, it says they will not talk or present um, in front of a large group. And these students volunteer because they're so excited about what they're learning that they want to share their knowledge with the class. And so there, there's an example, um, a lesson idea, and I'll share this lesson later, is we did um, Iron Chef with the different types of civilizations for social studies in fifth grade. And the kids had to do like a would you rather for their special ingredient. And it was so successful. Like students with disabilities were the leaders of the group because they were so engaged in the learning. And I mean, some of these are hard. They could be hard questions to answer or to summarize or to think about. And so just seeing that population super excited um, was a lot of fun. This next one is sharing a challenge that you might have when it comes to Iron Chef in your classroom. And this one was a GIF and a possible solution. So two um, kind of special ingredients that they had to add. So one of the challenges that comes with Iron Chef is assigning it. 
Um, if your students are not familiar with going to file, make a copy and then sharing it with group leader or their group leader shares it out, that can be a challenge and it can be a hold up on your, your, on your lesson. Um, so really being strategic about how we do this. And I'm going to show you a solution later. Um, so I'll do my special ingredients later for this type of challenge. But again, that's like the biggest hurdle. You could assign it in Google Classroom and then pick like random students as groups. But again, it's it's time consuming to assign. So we're going to kind of look at different ways and strategies that this barrier could be removed so that you're able to use Iron Chef in um productive and that transition is really smooth. And then you're going to also brainstorm special ingredients. So again, we'll, we have a wakelet here. And just again, part of this challenge was getting just ideas about what could I use as a special ingredients? Because sometimes you're planning and you're like, I don't know what I want these kids to do or what kind of connection. So I have a whole wakelet of different ideas that I add to as I think of different things or I see different things on Twitter. Um, so again, this slide deck will be available for you. And this is one that I've used with adults. And it's just a fun way to get adults to do it because I think so many times when we actually do it, especially myself, I wanna use it in the classroom because I've seen it done. I've seen it as the student. I know what roadblocks my kids are going to come into and I can just kind of quickly go over what I need them to do. Okay. So now it's just some templates. Um, these templates I found on Twitter. So I apologize that I don't give credit because I don't always know who created these. But if we do see them in the speaker notes, I will for sure shout them out. But again, thank you if you did share any of these templates on Twitter um, because they're really, really good. So here one is one and it's kind of got um, SpongeBob as the like theme. And you can just kind of see what this Iron Chef might look like. Um, so they're choosing five Nile River animals, and then they'll have five slides from this list. So again, the kids have a little bit of choice on this example with Iron Chef. So again, they're picking five from this list, and then they will create their slides. Um, so bullet point number one, the habitat, what available food sources, what plants, petter, um, building materials, that kind of stuff. And then ideas for bullet point number two, the movement. And so it kind of has a frame for them, but they get to pick their animals. And then there's that secret ingredient and it's a fun fact. Um, so again, just really fun. This one does look a little different than the one that we had, but it's totally easy to use in your classroom. And I love that this one gives the kids some choice because they're choosing one animal. The next example um, is using books, so like the outsiders, and it was chapter six. And so again, here's the directions. And then right here, um, the students are finding a text to self, text to world, and text to text. Um, and then they're trying to do what is the text connection you found in this chapter, type the paragraph in where you found it. So they're using text evidence to do that. And then they're going to go ahead and do the secret ingredient. Um, same here, imagery, and then they're going to include audio in the slide deck. And then this one, they're going to include a um, GIF, and they're finding something that was new or surprising information in this chapter. Okay, and it just keeps going on. And again, the kids are working together on this activity. So again, you can use this with books that you're reading as a class. Um, this example is just another one of... Um, like vocabulary terms that the students are doing. And you can see how simple. So some of these are like designed very graphically um, well. This one's just simple. It has bit emojis and it's just a blue slide. Okay, it has the direction so that students know what they're doing. And then they're going into detail about um, their thing. And this one's kind of fun because they had to take um, their teachers and then add like a component, like a speech bubble about them. Uh, again, this one's a little bit well designed and this one was on theme. So what is theme? What helps you determine a theme of the story? And this one was really cool because this one was about theme, but then this one was about main idea. And then this one was on inferences. And so these three um, different presentations were used in the same class period. One group had theme, 
one group had um, inferences and one group had main idea. And so your jigsaw gets even more bigger because the students are teaching each other about these different topics. And the teacher used um, different data points to strategically group the students. So the students that needed help with the different topics were on that slide deck. And then this one is like with insect groups. And so again, there's a secret ingredient and the students have all these slides that they have to do something with. This teacher provided resources in the speaker notes for the students so that they're not searching Google completely. And it's kind of a defined search experience for the students. So I wanted to just show that example. Let me make that bigger, there we go. Okay, this one um, again is on a book. And so the students could watch this like trailer and then they have um, their secret ingredient was a fortnight dance. Uh, so again, it doesn't have to be completely educational related. You can do it to engage your students. Um, so they put their title and name of the myth. They added three bulleted facts um, busting the myth here. And then they added a pictures for the proof. Um, and so then there was like six different things that they had to do on each slide. And then they had to add their Fortnite dance. <laughs> um, this one's a lot of fun too, to the different types of government. Um, so the groups have to write the definitions, examples, describe in four sentences, put an image. And then their special ingredient is they have to address a problem. So some type of problem that's happening in that type of government. And I love this layout. We'll see this layout again, but it's just so simple for students to just kind of add where they need to add their work at. And these are all able to be customized. So if I wanted to change any of this, I would go up to slides, edit master, and then I can change this word definition to maybe something else. If I wanted my kids to do um, something else with the topic. This one's with the Goonies. Um, so right here, it just kind of talks about like special ingredient ideas that you could do. So maybe the kids include a quote, they could, um, add where they are now, which Goonie characters are they, so they can really go deep with this. This one is also with Nearpod. Um, so just showing you an example of how this could be used using Nearpod. And then we've got Cartoon Iron Chef of the Quarantine. Um, so right here you can kind of again see it's that jigsaw activity. Um, and then students right here, shelter in place day one, the struggle is real. So then they're just kind of adding um, what they're kind of thinking. And so then down here, it was all about quarantine. So you can see their kind of prompts in the speaker notes. So again, you could put the prompts on the slide or in the speaker notes, whatever works best for you and your students, just provide that clarity to them. Um, this one is really cool. It's on words. Um, so fun with words. So there might be a root word of the week. Um, I used to do this with my basic reading groups. We always had like a root word of the week so we could get through them all throughout the whole year. Um, so this one's pan. And then the secret ingredient that they have to use is gifts. And so right here, they've got their secret ingredient, parts of speech, the meaning, world history, synonyms, a picture of the graphic um, or graphic related words and antonyms. So they had to use that pan for their word. Um, and then they had to explain it kind of using a frere model type of activity in eight parts kind of mix. And then if the kids finished early, there was a Quizlet activity with them, this activity. So then they could review that wor root word even more. This next one um, is, is with Egypt, Egyptian gods. Um, so it kind of goes over like an example of what the teacher was looking for. And then the kids would be able to kind of explain the different gods of, the members, um, the duties that they might have had, and just kind of explain the different topics. So again, they're working in groups. Every single student gets that one slide. You could also do something on Jamboard. Um, so the directions, person one, person two, person three, and then person one, they add all their resources, two, three, four. I personally like Google Slides a lot better. I feel like the kids have a lot more options, but maybe you wanna limit them. 
And so with Jamboard, there are limits on what you can do. And so that might be a better option for you and your students. And then again, here's this template. It kind of pops up again, but this one just talks more about mysteries um, in Egypt. And so you can go to kind of just see more examples and resources that are available um, with this Iron Chef. And then right here, we've got um, punctuation and dialogues. So you can, again, see another example um, before the quotes. And then the kids would kind of explain what is happening. And then group two. I love this example because group one is every kid is working in the same slide deck, which it might not be good for you, um, depending on your students. But then you can kind of see really quick. Um, all the different groups and you can kind of compare. So as a teacher, you can go into this grid view and I can quickly go, oh my gosh, group six is, is struggling. So I need to go over and help that group. So again, you can kind of look at how the groups are doing and then go over, have conversations with those different groups if you need to. And again, you'll want to use that um, grid view type of um, setting so that you can see your students. And then right here is just another template, um, pretty basic, but it's just another template if you would rather have something different. And then this one is um, Athens versus the Spartans. And right here you can see like the different work and the kids write three to four bullet points about Athens and then verse and they do the same. And their special ingredient was the would you rather. So they had to come up with like a would you rather type of scenario for this topic. Um, so again, I kind of took this idea and stole it for another activity. <laughs> um, this one was awesome. It was just shared with me um, on Twitter. One of the, um, so she was on Twitter and she was watching, I forget what session I did, but it was on um, Edge Iron Chef and Amy, I think it was like the student one. And so Amy was watching this and she created this this week. Um, so she has like what you're supposed to do and then she's got, what is it? Why is it important? Give an example. The kids had to find an image or video. And then their special ingredient was a screenshot. Um, she's, a, she even put like different tips in. So love, love, love this template. And her kids did amazing. She shared their examples with me and I was like, oh, this is amazing. Um, so again, in the dictionary, there is an order to the words. What is it? Why is it important? Um, and they were working on dictionary skills and she had a couple other adults watching her and they were just so excited to try these. But again, you could steal her template if you're not using, um, dictionary skills, just file, make a copy. And then this is the one, um, that we did on civilizations that I was talking about earlier. So we had our group numbers, the slide decks right here and then who was in charge. And then again, the kids went through and they added um, different information for each of the groups. And then they took a screenshot of themselves and they added their picture to the different people. Um, so they were like, and they were good. So when the kids presented, they actually did not present these slides. They presented slide six, their special ingredient. And they had to explain why they picked that activity or pick that civilization. And so some of them were like, well, I pick this group because um, they sacrifice animals instead of people. And so you, they were able to make those connections about why they would pick that different civilization. Or I picked this group because they eat berries. I love berries or I love potatoes or whatever. And they were able to make those self to connections with the groups. Um, so this one was a really good activity. And the kids, again, they only did one slide. But then they had to talk to this group member and learn about the government real quick and then decide where their picture went. And then on here is um, just another example that we did with uh, the American Revolution. And so you can just kind of see here the five ingredients that make up the American Revolution. Choose um, the British law. This one was kind of fun. The kids had to use like call outs. So they had to use the shape tools and these different call outs and have like a conversation and use first person as their special ingredients. And then this one, they had to use emojis only on how they felt. Um, so again, just a really fun ways to engage your students. And then they presented really quick um, their different slides. This one is using Desmos. Um, so students in math, they might be graphing some type of 
thing. And so right here, they had to pick their image and put it there. And then they had to explain what they were graphing. Um, so just another cool idea and using Iron Chef in a different way. And then here is another template. It's kind of similar to um, the one that we've seen already, but it's just kind of nice to see another example because um, I know those can be really helpful. And then right here is um, we did this one with Google. So like um, we talked about like different Google products. So this one was with adults as well. And so the adults talked about they used a Google product such as Keep, how they used it. Um, they talked about like success stories of using Keep. And they talked about different challenges that they have when using Google Keep. And then um, how might you build capacity? They did not get to this slide. But again, just another fun way to explain how to use this with. Um, oh, wait, no, they provided like a huge slide deck in here on how they plan to use it. So again, it's just like a great way to kind of see what other people are thinking with adults. And this could be a fun PD for you to do with adults. This one is just a blank template on civil rights. So the kids, this one was a prior knowledge. So the teacher kind of left it very open and she just wanted the kids to get some prior knowledge and do some research on civil rights before she taught it. So again, these lessons can be done before, middle, and totally up to you and what you're teaching. And so it was really cool just to see like what the kids found about civil rights. So like some of them found information out about Jackie Robinson and then they added that. And so it made a connection when they were actually reading a story about Jackie Robinson to what they were learning um, during this session. And then right here is just another one. Um, so using Iron Chef and um, the kids, it's just a really good example of different artifacts that they might have used. And then this one kind of has a template for the students as well, or a rubric, sorry. And then this site um, is amazing. So this site has a video if you want to see somebody else presenting Iron Chef. But on here, there's so many different examples. Um, there's that Goonies one. Here's a padlet of just different ideas on using Iron Chef. And then if you click down, you can go like to starters. And there's even more different ideas on like, here's some start smarts that you could use. Um, here's some entree type ones. Are you teaching English, history, math? So if you're teaching math, you click math and then there might be some templates built in to that section. So like, here's one on the hero's journey. Here's one on fables. Um, so just a really good resource to keep for you um, that you can kind of look at. And then here is just some examples on like tasty notes. So this is like the actual judging. And I kind of like the way that they do this because they have like a scoring rubric and they explain like the difference on the scoring cards. So they like went all out. And this was actually like a real Iron Chef with food. Um, so it was like a cooking class. But I just love how they kind of um, had like a judge's scoring card, which you could recreate for your Iron Chef lessons. And then there's like pro tips as well. So this is like a good, good resource if you're looking for more. And then this Wakelet has a bunch of different secret ingredient ideas. So right here, like the word dictionary. Um, so kids might have to, or word dictation. And so kids might just have to go in here. They might have to go into tools and then voice typing and they can just use their voice. They're not allowed to type. They have to just use their voice. So that could be like one of the parts of the secret ingredient because that's kind of hard to do. Um, ABC stories, like it starts with A, B, C, and they have to go in order and they have to think of a word that starts with A, then B, then C, and it, it just kind of keeps going. Maybe they use emojis with their stories. Um, they might have to add photos and students that have memes. Um, there could also be, but wait, there's more. So like they have a story and then they have to say like, but wait, there's more. And then like kind of add to it um, their story. So there's just some examples here if you want to keep thinking. This is also open to collaborators. So feel free to add your ideas for any special ingredients you might have. And then of course we cannot do an our, um, edgy protocol of the week without Kim Vogie. So she creates these awesome resources. And there's a couple of different templates here that you can use um, with your students. And then she also has a Padlet of different resources as well. 
And then I wanted to talk about that barrier that I was talking about earlier in the presentation. So we have this barrier of students. How do they get these presentations? How do they get them quick? And so Future Design School created this spreadsheet and my mind immediately went to um, Iron Chef. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, um, let's find a good one that I really like. This one. I'm gonna go to File, Make a Copy. I'm going to move this out of this um, folder. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have your template all set up the way that you're ready for your kids to see it. Okay. I'm going to move it. Oh, try it again. And you're going to want to create a folder in your Google Drive. So right here, I've got my folder. Here is um, my template. I'm going to move that into there. Then I'm going to go ahead and open this. OK, I'm going to call this how just so I remember that it's mine. And then I'm going to go ahead and up here to the share link and copy this link. And then I'm going to go back over to my spreadsheet and go over to generate. And you have to use this spreadsheet that will be in the wakelet. So I'm gonna go over to generate, generate copies, continue. I'm gonna say, yes, you can use my account. And then I'm gonna click it again. Okay, I'm gonna name my file. So this is Iron Chef um, Words. And then I'm gonna paste that link to that file that I wanted to make a copy. Okay, now we're just waiting for it to run the script. And so if I go back in here, I can see group one, group two, all of these groups are being created. Um, so again, I don't have to go to file, make a copy. All my copies are being made for me. This is a huge, huge time saver um, because before I was copying all of these different groups and I could even change it. If I wanted to name these groups, I could change these groups. Um, if I wanted partners, I could write the partner names. It does not have to be group one, group two. Like you can make this customized. Whatever this says though, is what is going to be made in the um, file. And then remember we named it Iron Chef Words. So if I go back to the um, spreadsheet, now I want a link of all this stuff in this folder. I'm also going to want to share this folder so that anybody in my um, district might be able to view and edit it. Okay, so I want all the kids to be able to edit their slide decks. So I'm gonna change the whole folder, not the individual things. Go back to that spreadsheet, generate links, and I'm gonna paste that folder link. And so now I can share this with my students and I can, um, like I don't need these and I can move group six and five around because it, it kind of went in a reverse order um, or I could filter it if I wanted to. And then I can just share this and then I could write the kids names over here and then they would just click and then they will be able to edit their Iron Chef um, activity. So again, student names go here, generate, generate copies first, and then you can generate the links. And then you could share this as view only in Google Classroom, and then the kids would find their names. And you can delete all of this once you're done with it. Um, and then the kids would find their names, and then they can go in and click their presentation. And then they can also edit whatever they're working on. And then for you as the teacher, you just have to click through as they're presenting. Um, or if you have like an adapter where the kids can quickly present. But if not, you just click open the tabs and just click, 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 click. And they present as you're clicking. Um, so it's super fast, super easy. It can be great for time um, timekeeping. There's also this um, way that we've done it. So the kids make a copy of the presentation. It's like file, make a forced copy. And then they go in and they can add who, what, and what they're doing. Um, so this is just another example of using Iron Chef. And again, you can make your own templates. This teacher made her own templates of the different types of government. She wanted an image. She wanted a meme. Um, she had their secret sauce ingredient and then what she wanted to see. So such a great way to add different information quickly. 
All right, that was a lot um, because Iron Chef's my favorite. And don't forget, I'm going to add all of these amazing resources to the Iron Chef collection. So you will want to find this link. It's in the YouTube description and it will be available um, probably 15 minutes after we go live. All right, thank you so much for joining. And I'm also going to put a link to the feedback form and you can get a certificate of attendance. So make sure you fill that out. And I hope you enjoyed today's session using Iron Chef. Thank you so much for joining us during this Gold EDU professional learning session. Make sure you check out our website at goldedu.org, where you can find out more information about us and how to follow us on all these different social media platforms. You can come and see upcoming events, and you can also book a session for your school, district, or coaching session. You can also get gold EDU swag if you want to show off your goldness. Also, make sure you fill out the feedback form at bit.ly, capital G, gold, EDU, feedback. And this will give you a certificate of attendance. Thanks so much for watching and make sure you check back so you can enjoy all the gold EDU professional learning opportunities.